Thank you, SB2. I love you. Great organization. I started out 20 years ago as a family nurse practitioner in women's health and adolescent medicine. And there were three things that I kept hearing from my patients over and over again. I don't know, I don't care, and I can't help it. Bright young women were suffering from eating disorders, anxiety, depression, addiction, and other self-harming behaviors, and something was falling short for them. They needed to ba make better choices, but they weren't doing it. Now, my first aha moment, I have two, was realizing that a teen girl won't just say no to high-risk behavior, or maybe take her meds, or certainly not engage fully in therapy, unless she first changes her foundational attitudes. She needs to fully care about herself and her body before she can make better choices. She actually needed three things, and Lucy said them. She needed self-awareness, the antidote to I don't know, self-respect, I care enough about myself to want to change, and self-control, so she can say, I have the tools that I need so in the moment I can make the right choices. Now, for me personally, I had found those through mindfulness-based practices, through a serious study and commitment to yoga, meditation, and reflective writing, I was able to really transform some negative, destructive patterns in my own life to a really healthy and positive relationship with myself. And I wanted that for not just my patients, but every young girl, and especially for those that were most at risk, for the most impact. And the Art of Yoga project was created. So we started bringing the yoga and creative arts curriculum to a middle school in East Palo Alto and to group homes and residential treatment centers. And right here is Celine, one of the first girls we worked with, and that's one of three of our curriculums. In 2005, we were invited to join a new state-of-the-art gender-responsive pro rehabilitation program in San Mateo County Juvenile Detention. So... Working in the prison system was a whole new challenge for me, and it was really there that my real education began and my second aha moment. One day, I was working with a group of girls, and I noticed one was missing, and I asked where Vanessa was, and I was told, oh, Vanessa, well, she's in trouble right now for passing a note to her pimp. What? This girl, 12-year-old child that I remembered in the light pink sweats and the braids had a pimp. As I researched girls in the juvenile justice system, I found that 90% nationally have been sexually abused. Although they were in the system for committing a crime, I realized that most of these girls were also victims. For girls like Vanessa, addiction, sexual and domestic violence, trafficking and gangs are daily facts of life. These girls are caught in cycles of violence and victimization violence and victimization. If I wanted to help them make better choices, I needed to better understand the trauma and violence in their lives and how that impacted those decisions. Our early programs, which focused on body image and media literacy, weren't enough. When the girls told me affectionately, you're a skinny white lady and you need more junk in the trunk, <laughs> what they were telling me was, my approach needed to be more relevant to their realities. Yeah? So our work needed to focus on violence prevention, safety in relationships, and healing. Healing. The latest in neuroscience and our partnership with the Child Trauma Academy tells us that chronic trauma and neglect at critical times during brain development, leaves the girls with very dysregulated nervous systems. They're basically caught in that survival part of the brain, that fight or flight, and that causes that dysregulation. And that causes poor decision making and gets them into the system in the first place, those behaviors. They act out with violence and aggression, but more often for girls, they act in with self-destructive behaviors. Mindfulness-based practices like ours aim to address decision-making at its core, to help regulate emotions and behavior, and are now a proven and innovative solution to help girls heal from trauma. 
The Art of Yoga Project now serves over 700 at-risk, exploited, and incarcerated teen girls each year in three San Francisco Bay Area County juvenile justice systems in 16 sites. Judges, chiefs of probation, mental health leaders, and other subject matter experts value our evidence-based approach. And because it is both rehabilitative and therapeutic, we've been called the missing link in a girl's rehabilitation. And now instead of, I don't know, I don't care, and I can't help it, we hear girls like Vanessa and Celine say things like, yoga, meditation, and art help me understand myself. I know my thoughts and why I do the things that I do. I like myself, and I take a breath before reacting. And the Art of Yoga Project, along with advocates and donors like all of you at SV2, need to answer with the same accountability because we know and we care and we can really help. Thank you so much.